Hi, I'm Tahira. Thank you for joining me. I want to tell you um, about some interesting things I found out while researching on a larger study from my mentor, um, what I found out about perceptions of genetic illnesses. Um, Acknowledgements, I'd like to thank Dr. Bediaco. He is the imperial director for the, of the laboratory for the social and psychological study of sickle cell disease. My fellow research assistant, Divya Powell, she's back there. And um, they had a lot of hard work on this research, and also Dr. Corey Haben helped me with the statistics software. Just a little bit of background on this. Research has shown that people are more likely to have negative evaluations of black faces if the faces are more stereotypically black. And stereotypically black features include darker skin, broader nose, and fuller lips. And I'm using the term stereotypical because a stereotype is a preconceived idea that people attribute certain characteristics to all members of a group. So in this example, as you can see, this face here, that would be the more stereotypically black face. And there is evidence that this type of evaluation also affects criminal sentencing, as one study shows that defendants with more stereotypically black features serve up to eight months longer in prison for felonies than defendants with less stereotypically black features. And they are also more likely to be sentenced to death in cases where the victim is white. And also two studies by Blair and colleagues show that it doesn't matter what the race of a target face is, if the nose and lips are more stereotypically black, perceivers will assign characteristics to that face that are stereotypic of blacks. So as you see here, this face here, even though it's lighter than this face, these two are supposed to represent white males. But as you see that one has this uh, broader nose, fuller lips, and the study shows that someone would evaluate that face as if they were evaluating a black person. So this led me to the research question, regardless of race and ethnicity, do stereotypically black features affect the perception of an individual's health status? My rationale was that skin color is the most prominent feature of a person and black features are evaluated more negatively. So I hypothesized that black faces would be rated more likely to have a genetic medical condition than other race faces. Using computer software, we designed faces of various ethnic backgrounds that also vary by physiognomic features. And we digitally removed hair and other accessories so that there would be no other cues from which people could extract information. So the faces you see here are designed to have more stereotypically uh, black features, which is the broader nose and fuller lips. And we put this category as high Afrocentric. We also created faces of the same four races, but the features were designed to be what we refer to as high Eurocentric. And the noses and lips, as you can see, compared to the other ones, are thin. So for the experiment, we examined the perceived likelihood that each of these eight faces would be judged as having a genetic illness. One illness was sickle cell disease, which has high incidence in populations of African descent, and the other genetic illness was cystic fibrosis, which is more common in whites. This experiment was conducted via computer, where participants would have an experience similar to a PowerPoint presentation, and the computer randomly assigned them to one of the two genetic illnesses. So first they would be given basic information about the illness, and they would be asked to write the likelihood that each of the faces had the illness and each participant was shown all eight faces in a computer-generated random order. And a little bit about the participants. We, um, this is preliminary data, so we still intend to continue the study until we get at least 200 participants. And this is from the first 75. Half were assigned the sickle cell condition, and half were assigned the cystic fibrosis condition. So we have the breakdown of participant ethnicity, and this is self-reported. Um, our sample was 55% male, and as you remember, we use all male faces. And at the end of each assessment, participants were asked whether they knew someone with the illness to which they were assigned. And 87% of participants did not know anyone with the, the illness to which they were assigned. And I conducted a repeated measures ANOVA and found a main effect of race, such that the black faces and the white faces were rated significantly more likely to have either illness 
than the Asian faces. And we also found an interaction of race and condition such that, as you can see here, black faces were rated significantly more likely to have sickle cell and the white faces were rated significantly the most likely to have cystic fibrosis. And we also found a main effect of features such that faces with high Afrocentric features were rated significantly more likely to have either illness than faces with high Eurocentric features. And finally, there was an interaction of race and features such that the faces rated significantly most likely of all others to have a genetic illness, whether it was sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis, were the black and white faces with high Afrocentric features. And this study provides preliminary evidence that racial judgments are not so much about skin color, but facial features such as nose and lips. Also that stereotypically black features do affect perception of genetic illnesses, even ones such as cystic fibrosis that whites are more likely to have. This study also brings to mind previous research about impression formation and negativity dominance. And these studies show that when we form impressions of others, if we perceive one trait that we think is negative, that will affect everything else that we think about that person. And in this case, the one negative trait seems to be the stereotypically black features. And as we saw, it was regardless of race. So those features dominated the impressions formed about the faces. So it seems like once that was the one negative feature and people assigned them a second negative feature, which was a genetic illness. And one limitation is that we don't know exactly what people were perceiving when they saw the white face with the high Afrocentric features. So we can't, we just really don't know what people were thinking when they saw that face. And also we don't know what participants' knowledge of the illnesses were because as you remember, the black faces were rated significantly more likely to have sickle cell and the white faces were rated significantly more likely to have cystic fibrosis. But we don't know if our participants knew that as a medical fact. And finally, we want to see if these results were the same at the end of the study when we had at least 200 participants instead of just 75 participants. And any questions? Do you think one of the factors that maybe contributed, you were saying, when they had the mixed race with high Afrocentric, Afrocentricity, they said that, do you, I mean, do you think that maybe they thought maybe these people were of a mixed uh, uh, background or maybe that's, that contributes to it? That's a very good question. It's um, interesting, you know how if you see people who are mixed race, they have just certain features of different types of people. And also, I thought it would be interesting to include hair because, you know, we can do so much with skin color, we can do so much with features. Hair is another thing. And sometimes we look at people, and we see this like, all the time when people try to figure out what somebody is. So that's that's a really good thing. <laughs> I forget that all the time. But that's um you have a question? Was there any information given about the the, the photographs of the, the people or they are strictly just using the, the pictures to make an assumption? Just the pictures. They were informed you'll see eight faces uh -huh. and you just they had to rate from zero to five. Zero not likely at all, five uh, very likely. And they just had to say if they thought this person had either sickle cell or if you were in another condition, rate the likelihood that this person has cystic fibrosis. And, and who, who made up the participant population? Um, UMBC students, or and actually we had a couple of faculty members, a couple of grad students. So if you see flyers around campus, uh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> so you can come by, by the lab. We're still doing the study. Sorry, just one more. Um, I think it's really interesting. So, are you considering looking at how physicians may, or how physicians' perceptions of genetic illness may or may not be affected by, um, you know, people's facial features? Um, definitely. Actually, um, Dr. Bediako has a whole lot of research on this type of thing, and this is a part of a larger study. So he just allowed me to do a study on his data. So this was almost like something, and. Um, Another presentation, um, my fellow researcher, Divya, she'll be doing something about reaction time, like how long it took people to make their decision about whether someone had an illness. So all of these things were things that we were wondering about, about the study. But Dr. Bediago's research definitely will examine that type of thing. Uh, what did you tell the participants about the two different diseases? 
Um, they were told, really like the medical thing, like sickle cell, it was more like, you know, why it's sickle cell shaped and nothing about <laughs> ethnicity given. Yeah. Cystic fibrosis was like really limited information about what happened. Oh, um, this question kind of got formed from the previous uh, talk that you had as well. Um, I saw that the sample was made up of uh, mostly Caucasian or the more or more Caucasian than any other group. Mm -hmm. Do you think that might have been slightly different or does that might be slightly different if the racial breakdown had changed a little bit or do you think that maybe it still would have been kind of... Um, that's actually another study that we could do and that's just something that I didn't look at when I ran the SPSS statistics. So actually that would be something to look at to see you know, once someone self-reports what their race is and look at how each group, each racial group, judges the faces. That would actually be a really good study, I think, for future research. But I, I didn't look at the data, but we do have it. Yeah. Well, I had a question about um, when you said that I think there was a correlation that a lot of people thought that Asian people were less likely to have either illness mm -hmm. than the other two races. Do you have any, um, are, you, are you finding that in any of your other studies that people are think, seeing that? Like people um, are assuming that or? This is actually the only study that I'm working on. So we actually haven't come to the end of it, but um, just like with um, the other suggestion about looking at based on the participants race and how they rated, I think that might have an effect, but um, I just, it was just really interesting. I, we didn't expect these results either. I just thought that, you know, with black being looked at more neg negatively, I thought that any black face anyone saw would be more likely. But as we saw, it was just, for some reason, Asians were always significantly the least likely to have either illness. But I'm not sure. That's really interesting to study, though. Yeah. 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 Yeah.